Fusion 360 form, the question was asked, how do you model this pattern into a solid object? And that pattern is this pattern down here on the shoe sole. And right now that's just an appearance, I think the styroform appearance in Fusion 360. And it looks like it's a 3D pattern, but it is really just a visual appearance. So if you would print or, or 3D print this sole, it would have a smooth surface. So I'm sure there are a number of uh, alternative workflows. One, for example, being exporting this. Uh, the sole is already a solid body here. And you could, you know, export this as an STL and then probably do stuff with it in Mesh Mixer. But I don't work working with uh, triangulated meshes if I don't have to. So I'm going to try something different. So I noticed in this model, this um, sole is already modeled as a T-spline. And I'm going to use that and uh, move that over to Blender. Um, but before I do that, I need to fix something because this T-spline is not uh, created from quads only. Quads meaning faces that only have four vertices and, and thus four edges. Uh, that face here and the face on the opposite side already have five uh, edges. One, two, three, four, and five. So I'm going to simply modify and insert points and all along here. So if a red point here shows up, that means you have uh, snapped to the middle. And okay, so now this is a nice quad mesh and I'm going to simply find this T-spline here and save the control frame as a .obj. So And that goes into the downloads folder. But that's all I want to do here in Fusion 360 at the moment. So as I said earlier, this has already been now thickened into a solid body. So now I'm going to move over to Blender. Um, I'm still using Blender 2.79. There's a newer version out or a beta version 2.8, but I'm going to use 2.79 for now. So the first thing I'm in Blender, I hit the X key and delete the default cube because I don't need it. And then I'm going to change over into the settings here, the scene settings. And I had done this before, so it's already at millimeters, but usually the default is nothing or Blender units. I don't want Blender units. So I use millimeters in Fusion 360, so I also use millimeters here in Blender. And I set my, and I've done that already, I set the clipping to 10 meters, which resides into 1,000, whatever. Um, clean this out and also change the viewport to pers uh, to auth orthographic mode from perspective mode. So now I'm going to import this OBJ file that I created earlier. And there it is. So that looks a lot bigger than I had anticipated. Interesting. So now I have it at the correct setting. I shouldn't have to do that usually. And again, here I'm doing what I said I'm going to do earlier, 10 meters. So I can see my complete, almost complete grid here. So now of course, what you see here is basically the mesh that you see in smooth view in Fusion 360 here in box view mode. And that's okay because the first thing we're going to do is hit the N key to get rid of that panel. I don't need it. Make this a little wider. And I add a subdivision surface modifier. And we need lots of vertices and lots of faces. So I shift to wireframe mode to show uh, what I mean. We want to displace all these vertices and faces that we have here. So I increase that level one more. So that gives us 237,000 faces. And Fusion 360, depending on what computer you have, will deal perfectly fine with that. It takes a little while to convert, but it'll work fine. So Z key back to solid. And I'm going to now also add another modifier. That's the displace modifier. And the displace modifier needs a texture. 
So I'm creating new texture and I call it Voronoi displays and I'm just I can change directly here into the texture panel or I can click here and there it is and I change this to Voronoi and we can already see it applies it here but it's way too fine so I'm going to change the size to I can use this uh, slider here but it only goes to two but I can type in three and it also looks like it's the opposite way around. I also need to modify the mesh so I hit the tab key and select edit mode here and we're back in uh, you see the control cage and I hit A to deselect everything, hit A again to select everything and then I hit control N to recalculate the surface normals to the outside. And then if I go back into um, object mode I can see that now the displacement is the way I like it or my display, displacement is oriented the way it should be. Uh, I need to do one other edit to this mesh. I go back into edit mode, hit A, and select the upper edge loop and move this up a little bit. So later on when I go back into Fusion 360, this extends beyond the solid body that I'm going to split with the surface. So now with that change applied, if we scroll in a little further, we see that this looks sort of pixelated and that is because if I go back to wireframe we displace, we use that texture to displace all these vertices and faces and if we want to see how that looks like or would look like in Fusion 360 we can um, add another subdivision surface modifier and then set the shading to smooth and this is how this should look like in Fusion 360 once we export it. So going back to this modifier, first of all I don't need this here, this was just for visualizing what we're doing. So this mid-level is important because right now we shrunk this shoe sole a little bit towards the inside. I'm going to put this to 0 and to minus 0.5 make that a little bit bigger and when you do this you need to experiment with that a little bit and, and see how this turns out when you re-import it into Fusion 360. So now you can actually take this and export it as another OBJ file and uh, it also goes into downloads and I call this um, Shoe Soul Blender here down here is um, our export dialog. I want to apply the modifiers. I only want my selection and I do not need the material file written. So now I'm going to export it. And again, this is 237,000 um, faces, but they're quad faces. So back in Fusion 360, I'm going to click on insert, insert the mesh and there it is Hit OK start the T-spline select the mesh right click and say convert and convert quad mesh to T-spline and this will take a little while So there's our T-spline and if we zoom in we can see this is a T-spline with very many little faces and we click on finish form and that will convert that T-spline into a NURB surface. And there is our surface, that's the surface body. So now I'm going to use that surface body. I check all the way around if there's good intersection or that it doesn't protrude past this uh, shoe sole here, this solid body. I'm going to simply use the modify and split body tool to split this body with that surface. And make sure you don't have extend splitting tool. Make sure you have that disabled.
And there's our 3D texture in Fusion 360. If we zoom in, we can see this is a real displaced 3D texture. And when you print this or 3D print this, this come out quite nice. And if it still looks a little kind of scraggly and polygon heavy in Fusion 360, sometimes that has to do with the display detail control. You can change that from fixed uh, from from adaptive to fixed and high and you have to do that every time you open this model in Fusion 360. And also that takes a moment. Particularly if I don't click OK. Anyway, let's change to render. And here we also can see that maybe a little bit better that this is a real 3D texture. So this is one method how you can use the Fusion 360 in conjunction with other applications. But now obviously this isn't parametric by any means. So if you make changes to your geometry, to your shoe geometry, and then change it to your sole geometry, you have to repeat all that. So make sure um, all that is properly modeled and this is your last step in your model. So hopefully this helps.